This is an engine block which is very detailed and you can see it's got a very very large number of features. It's actually an unwise number of features probably. It's 900 plus. Uh, it's kind of part, it's a single part and it's pretty complicated so uh, it is what it is right but the thing is is that it is a regeneration time of you know under 50 seconds which isn't too bad. Uh, anyway, so I've, I did this a long time ago. It's nice to see that the threads are showing up. That's all good. I haven't done anything for a couple of years on this, really. Uh, I, I originally did this one in 2022. Right? And it's been upgraded yesterday because of the, the feature, uh, the, the new release, 196. Anyway, the problem to try and solve today is that there's... Back in the day when we when I did this, there was no mutual trim feature. Of course, there is a mutual trim native feature now, but this was a custom feature that we did. So this is back very very early on in the in the uh, in the feature list, and you can see there's a lot of stuff comes after it. So the challenge, and there's two more of them. So there's three mutual trim usages. Um, and you can, obviously you can see that if you have a look at the features it doesn't say that it's a custom feature maybe that would be nice if it did have a little asterisk or something but there's three of them so we've got to get rid of it and replace it with the new one so I'm going to roll back to here so that I can see oh wow it's very early on um, the way this was modeled is very modular I'm going to go into orthographic view here Looking at a single cylinder slice, uh, there's a couple of reference surfaces, that one on the outside, and that one on in there. So, so the mutual trim is no doubt... Actually, let's go one more feature back to see. All right, and it's not that surface. Let's hide that one. In fact, let's hide the part. So the mutual trim is between the orange and the gray thing here, as you can see again this is we're just trying to create this kind of pocket there all right all right so the the custom feature looks very similar to the new one and you know maybe we should just keep it i mean i'd probably prefer to do that uh, but the first surface is number three second surface is number two uh, and then you get the keep directions in that all right so let's see what happens if we do this oops the other way around three and two that happens to be the right direction we're going to merge it all right so that's the same of course you're all saying that the ids are going to be changing that is absolutely correct uh, so if i suppress this and there may be it may not take very long before we start to get oh, failures. So let's see if we can move forward to the next mutual trim. Yep. If I go down to here, so we've got one of them done. I'm trying to use, to cut to the chase, I'm going to try and use <clears throat> some of the, uh, the repair manager powers but let's just see how it goes so surface 2 is this orange one surface 4 is that thing on the bottom um, all right uh, okay so there are some there was a missing reference there all right, so that's probably due to us changing that mutual trim from before. Let's get rid of that part one. Um, I think it's this sketch here. It's saying it can't find the face of the enclosure. Yeah, okay, so the face closed. Um, the face there. Um, okay, so this is not an example of... Uh, repair manager but it could be a it could be a job for constraint manager what's it doing it's the sketch text border 
Uh, it's going to be coincident to that edge. So if we delete that one, okay, it's kind of easy, but we could fix that in there. Um, we probably need to add one more constraint to, yeah, like that. I mean, we've moved it a little bit. I could have put a dimension, but that's okay. Right, so if we fast forward back to this mutual trim here, which was the surfaces I'm trying to keep this bit in the middle, right? So one more time, it is the outside flangey bit that we're looking to recreate. So we will do mutual trim between that and number four. That's the wrong side. That's the wrong side. That's correct now. So I'll suppress that custom feature. And we've got the same thing on the other side. Oops. I often do that. Um, neutral trim there. I'm going to replace it with a native one. Of course, it's the wrong side, but now it's correct. Suppress the old custom feature. All right. The, I know the send it kind of way is just to say roll to end and see how many errors we've got and go back and fix them. That could be, that could work. And this whole thing, as probably said at the beginning, it takes about 45 seconds to regenerate the 935 features. Um, so it's uh, about halfway there now. Now this is remodeled piece by piece of a very old model uh, that we did in a different system. So it's a good side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, it doesn't use all of the latest techniques of Onshape, um, but in order to do that, I would have to really rethink a lot of the strategy around it. And this is an established strategy workflow for these kinds of parts. Um, so that wasn't really the time and the place to do that. All right, so that, if I switch off that surface or all of the surfaces, we have zero errors. That's pretty impressive because I have replaced one, two, and one more up here, three custom features with a, uh, with the native version of it. That's pretty impressive given that I did do this three years ago. Haven't really touched it since. And I just one other tip bit of information it took 49 seconds um, back when I did it it was taking 75 seconds to regenerate exactly the same thing um, so just pure incremental improvements that we've made on both the code and also the platform that this is running on um, we're getting a pretty substantial 40% boost in performance so um, that's Pretty impressive. Here we are again for part two, and generally I don't do these things in multiple scenes, but uh, I thought that this one really, in, you know, enough was uh, probably thrown up in that first section that I need to do some follow up here. So this is where we kind of left off, and I didn't show you all of the parts that were part of this 940 something kind of epic part studio. Uh, there's a bunch of things in here, like the uh, the red stuff is, is the beginnings of the oil galleries. Uh, the green is the water jacket through the water pump here. And the other stuff is the uh, the sleeves for the cylinders. Um, anyway, so that's, that's kind of where it got to in that first part studio. And I have, um, you know, I, I deliberately did this, created a very, very large part studio 
in order to demonstrate uh, a best practice. The best practice is not to have part studios that are so long. Um, you know, this is typically we saw for say four or five hundred features is kind of like a, a sensible limit, but it really depends on the features themselves and how much regeneration time is going to be required. You know, some features take a lot longer than others. In this particular, the way that I've modeled this, um, it's not particularly onerous, right? So it's 45 seconds now uh, to regenerate those features. So that's not, you know, unusable at all. You know, actually it's faster than some other systems that uh, on, on a similar thing. That... Anyway, <laughs> it's still a lot of features and there's a lot that can go wrong when you've got a thousand features like this. So it is better to break it up. There's a second reason why you might want to break this up, and that is um, for analysis. So the analysis uh, of something like this usually starts very early in the process uh, and not when everything is like laboriously and beautifully sculpted and filleted. You actually want to do some analysis early in the, in, in the process. So that is really the jumping off point to this other document that I created. Um, now, this one has been redone uh, laboriously into two stages. The first stage is the first 583 features, which really, as I've said here, make the base structure up. So there are no fillets in here. And in fact, there are no drafts, um, no draft features here at all. This is the base structure. It's the architecture of the engine, and it contains all the same parametric nature from before you know we've got the um, all of the variables that are driving this these are the key uh, these are the key variables from coming down from the the top down design and so you can get to this point and not worrying about drafts and fillets you can also make it quite uh, configurable so you can try things like on and off with the the ribs on and off uh, and make configurations for you know different strategies of ribs um, anything that you know really affects the architecture because um, at this point then you could just insert that part as the thing that you're going to simulate um, see here you know I've got it in with or without ribs and you know I'm going to do some kind of um, different sort of loading on this. Uh, we can come back to that in a minute. Um, so we've basically got this, uh, the base structure. What I do is in another part studio is derive that base structure in. Uh, this is not rocket science, right? You just derive the base, base structure in and then do your drafts and fillets. And I haven't finished this because I just, you know, I just wanted to quickly whip this up and get uh, enough done so that you can see the concept. But the derived part here is that base structure from before. And then I've actually used a, um, uh, a version reference as well. You know, I've got different versions in here at different sizes, you know, 86 bore, uh, bore 82 bore with no ribs. Um, you know, so this thing is, is, is going to be rapidly coming in because it's coming from a version reference. It's, so it's not, you know, using the workspace reference from here before. Based on top of that, then I can build you know, complicated or not complicated, as the case may be, uh, fillets and drafts and go around the, the whole model. So, you know, I've only done the first 37 of those features and I've got a couple hundred more to do, but at least it's broken up into separate part studios now. And the regeneration of this is very, very fast. Firstly, because that derived is coming in as a version. Uh, it's only taking you know, less than a second to do that. And then all these other features are, are, are quick ones on top of that. So I've got a really fast regeneration time here and I've got a fast regeneration time here uh, because there's nothing terribly complex. There's just a lot of stuff going on to be sure, you know, it's still high up in the feature count, uh, but it's not complicated stuff. It's just lots of it. So the feature regeneration time is quite low and overall it, is a really, really efficient way um, to get something like this done. So let's have a quick look down here. I like traveling down the oil passageway until I get to cylinder number two, make it down our way into the crank <laughs> and spin the crank. Oh, sorry about that. Having a little bit of fun here, but that is the most efficient way, I think, to build these complicated things. Um, 
as I said before, you know, maybe this part studio with the fillets and drafts doesn't even have to be in the same document. You know, I could have, you know, I could peel this off into its own document now. Um, again, we've got a version reference, so that doesn't really change anything here. Um, and, uh, you know, we could be operating that on an entirely different um, document and version history. The base structure is unlikely to change as much as these final kind of manufacturing type of fillets and drafts um, that are going to be needed to, uh, to make this uh, manufacturable once we've got the base structure done.